I would love to dive into the topic of leaving a good partner and a and a good relationship because that was really what I struggled with and I've talked about this on my show a fair amount recently um how do you know how do you know when it's time and somebody asked here let me see like the balance between not settling and knowing that nobody is perfect so for me it was like I have this great person but we're not that compatible anymore the relationship is not fulfilling for either of us but we're really comfortable and there's companionship and things are okay like so that was such a struggle and when I started talking about that I got so much feedback from people who are in the same situation and you know we're told not to settle but then we're also told you know that nobody's perfect and relationships are work and so it's like where where do you how do you balance those things I have learned to use feelings as a um It's a data source, but feelings job is not to tell us the truth. That's not their job. Their job is to keep us alive. And so kind of like I don't measure from here to there on the other side of the room in gallons. Gallons is a great measurement, but it's the wrong measurement for measuring from here to there, right? I'm going to use yards or inches or feet or something. And so similarly, like my feelings are important and I got to pay attention to them and I got to, they're important signals, but their job isn't reality. Their job isn't truth, right? And so um, I think we always have to have a practice in relationships of coming back and saying, what are we building? And what what is the state of our marriage right now? And I think most of us wait until it, quote unquote, doesn't feel right. And that's, that's a, it's just the wrong proxy, right? Or it's the wrong measurement for how things are going. Um, I could feel really frustrated, but that, that passion and that frustration is good. That means things are right. You know what I mean? Or I can be really angry and anger is good when it's pointed towards something we care about, right? So I I think it's backing out of how does this feel and being really pragmatic and honest and having an open dialogue with what are we building together and where are we moving towards? What are we we co-creating together? And if you can't have that conversation, that's usually the path that this relationship's headed down an exit ramp because we're not building anymore yeah and i would imagine when there's indifference to what you're building (laughs) or each other and i think people you said it you said it so eloquently we say things are quote unquote good and our proxy for good is comfort and if we if we were to take it out of relationship and put that in a gym right You would never say I had a good workout because it was comfortable. You'd say I had a good workout because I really got pushed. The trainer pushed me hard and I feel stronger after this thing. There was extra weight on the bar. That was a good workout. But in our relationships, we're like, it's good when things are just super chill. And I just, I don't, it's that indifference, right? It's that quiet life of desperation. That's not a good relationship. And, um, but it feels, I don't want to rock it. And, and it's predictable. Um, that's not always the best proxy for things that are going well. When you start using words like indifferent or they don't care or um, like, I can't root for them anymore, their victories, I'm like, Egh. or vice versa, your victories are like, well, what about now we're headed towards resentment, which is the relational ash, right? And so it goes back to what are we building together? That comfort part, I think that that's kind of the key here. I think that we're all so averse to potentially feeling discomfort. And I know when I was going through my divorce, I um, looked at all of my fears with somebody that I work with in recovery. (laughs) And at the root of all of those fears, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What if I don't meet somebody? She said, what is at the root of all of these? The potential that I might feel temporarily uncomfortable. (laughs) And she said, you know, part of being a big girl is learning how to deal with discomfort. And I was like, way harsh, but noted. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, in my own life, I can take a step back and see how some of the greatest gifts in my life have been from walking through discomfort. Um, but it's so hard to have that perspective. Yeah, my buddy, um, Michael Easter, wrote, I think, a modern day matter- masterpiece called The Comfort Crisis, mm-hmm. which is a extraordinary read. But um I think accidentally in our culture, we created a world where, like I love air conditioning and leather seats, so who doesn't, right? And health insurance, and you and I can both just like push a button on our phone and food shows up, right? Like I love comfort, but we accidentally in the pursuit of comfort made 
uncomfort, uncomfortableness, discomfort, the enemy. And it's not right. You don't go to the gym and take all the weight off the bar or you don't go to therapy and just say like, we don't talk about these things. Like those are the things you talk about. Right. And so, um, or you don't go to recovery meetings and you're like, these memories are off limits like that. No, that's where we got to start. And so it's seeking that discomfort. And in your relationship, we're like, I don't want to push on that because that's where you have to start. That's where the lights need to be sh to, to shine. Right. And that's where the good stuff is. Okay. So the second part of that question, balance between not settling and then accepting that nobody is perfect. How do you navigate that? It almost sounds like an apples and oranges kind of question. Um, settling is like nobody's perfect is nobody's perfect is nobody's perfect, right? No relationship. It's redefining what perfect means, right? Um, but back to settling, settling is about you. It's when you think I'm not worth another day. I'm not worth saying this person doesn't align with my values. I'm not, I'm not worth being single because of X, Y, or Z. That's settling. Settling's about you. It's less about the other person. Um, and so th those, those, those feel clumped together, but those are two different questions. Yeah. I think it's something that a lot of people grapple with though. Um, myself included. I mean, I definitely felt that way in that relationship too, because I was like, am I just settling because it's comfortable <laughs> back to what we were saying before? Um, or is he just not perfect? And I remember somebody said to me, why don't you write down the most important things in a relationship? What are the most important things to you? And are you getting the top three? Are you experiencing the top three with your partner? And, um, Instead of being like making a list and I need to have everything on this list, but like, what's the most important to you? Is well, that? Well, I remember I went to college. When I went to college, um, I was a part of this group and they said to write down the 10 things of your forever person, right? So I wrote them down and um, I'm about a month out from 22 years of being married to the same person. And it's been super rocky and messy and all that, all the stuff you would imagine for being together for a quarter century. But she has two of those 10 things, right? And so I was wrong on almost every count. And one of them was like, be a beautiful woman, right? That was one of them. So like of all the things that I thought were important at that, that time in my life, they haven't panned out. What has panned out is two people saying, every day I'm going to wake up and say, how can I love you today? And I'm going to take a knee and I'm going to be really hopeful that you take a knee. And that's the way this thing's going to keep moving forward. If I try to use her as a hack to personal fulfillment, um, then I'm using her as cocaine. Like I'm using her as a drug, right? I'm using her. And so instead of flipping it and saying, how can I serve? And that's the risk, right? I hope she, I hope she has that same heart too. And there's seasons we're better at it than others. Um, and that, there's seasons when I totally am the worst, man. I just crash. Um, but I always want to get out of that conversation of, uh, like, I don't feel great. That's a data point. But that's not that's not the, the wise old sage. I also am a pretty emotional guy. And so I have a couple of close friends that, I'll run things by and I'm like, am I crazy? And they'll be like, yeah, you're, you're out to lunch on this one, man. She's way right. And you're not. And so it's being, it's knowing that when I get fired up, I go to fight or flight pretty quick and I get pretty anxious and I get pretty emotional and pretty dramatic. And it's important to have people that speak into my life. I outsource some of that just cause I'm, I can't always count on myself.